Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the small signal model of the BJT. So in the previous video, we have discussed that based on the magnitude of the input signal, we can model the BJT as either a large signal or the small signal model. And then we have discussed about the large signal model of the BJT. So similarly, now let us understand about the small signal model. But before that, first of all, let us understand what do we mean by the small signal and for what magnitude of the input signal we can use this small signal model. Now, during the discussion of the large signal model, we have already seen the IC versus VBE curve for the BJT. So, let's say for some large signal voltage VBE, we are getting some collector current. And here, the subscript Q defines the biasing or the operating voltages. So when we apply some voltage VB, then the collector current IC can be given by this expression. That is IC is equal to IS times e to the power voltage VB divided by VT. Where IS is the saturation current and VT is the thermal voltage. Now let's say on this large DC signal, a small perturbation or the small AC signal is also added. Let's say this voltage is equal to delta VB. So because of this small perturbation, there will also be a change in the collector current. So this change in the collector current to the change in the voltage VB can be given as the transconductance. And it shows how the change in the voltage VB gets translated into the change in the collector current. So the unit of this transconductance is either ampere per volt or the Siemens. Now let's say this small perturbation which we have applied is the sinusoidal in nature. That means delta VB is equal to Vm sin omega t. So because of this small perturbation, let's say the total collector current is equal to IC dash. And this IC dash can be given as IS times e to the power voltage VB plus delta VB divided by Vt or we can say that it is equal to Is times e to the power voltage Vb divided by Vt times e to the power delta Vb divided by Vt where delta Vb is equal to Vm sin omega t. So if you see this expression then here the collector current involves the exponential term. And because of that, it is difficult to find the change in the collector current because of the change in the voltage VB. But if we use the approximation, then we can find the change in the collector current. So let us see that. Now if you look this expression, then here first term is nothing but the collector current. That means we can say that IC dash is equal to IC times e to the power delta Vb divided by Vt. Now let's say this voltage delta Vb is very small. And let's say this delta Vb divided by Vt is much less than 1. Now when this delta Vb is very small, then we can say that we are operating in the linear region of this exponential curve. That means if the change in the voltage Vb is sinusoidal, then the change in the collector current will also be a sinusoidal. And mathematically, we can say that the collector current IC dash is equal to IC times 1 plus delta Vb divided by Vt. So basically, here e to the power delta Vb divided by Vt is expressed as 1 plus delta Vb divided by Vt. Because if you are aware, the e to the power x can be expanded as 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus so on. So when this term x is very small, then we can neglect the higher order terms and we can approximate this e to the power x as 1 plus x. So similarly, when this delta Vb divided by Vt is very small, 
then we can approximate this e to the power delta vb by vt as 1 plus delta vb divided by vt. That means the total current to current IC dash is equal to IC times 1 plus delta vb divided by vt. Or we can say that this current to current IC dash is equal to IC plus IC times delta vb divided by vt. So this term shows the change in the current to current because of the change in the voltage Vb. Let's say it is equal to delta IC. That means delta IC is equal to IC times delta Vb divided by Vt. Now as we have discussed earlier, this delta IC divided by delta Vb is the transconductance, right? That means from this we can say that this transconductance Gm is equal to IC divided by Vt. And when this delta IC by delta Vb is very small, then we can represent it as DIC divided by dVb. And in that case, just by differentiating this expression, we can get the value of the transconductance. For example, if we differentiate this current current with respect to voltage Vb, then we can write it as DIC divided by dVb is equal to Is times e to the power voltage Vb divided by Vt times 1 by Vt. And here this term is the current to current. That means DIC divided by dVb that is the transconductance is equal to IC times 1 by Vt. So this is the expression of the transconductance. And as you can see, this transconductance depends on the operating point. That means as the value of the current to current increases, then the transconductance will also increase. And in fact, that is also evident from the given curve. So if the current to current increases, then for the same change in the base emitter voltage, there will be a more change in the current to current. All right. So once again, now let us come back to this expression. And as we have just discussed, we can write this expression as IC plus GM times delta VB, right? Where here this current to current IC can be given as IS times e to the power voltage VB divided by VT. So the total current to current IC dash can be given as IC plus gm times delta vb so here the first term represents the current to current due to the dc biasing voltage vb while the second term represents the change in the current to current due to the small signal so in the first term the current to current can be found using this large signal model while we can find the change in the current to current by multiplying the change in the signal with the transconductance so as you can see over here, now we can treat this large DC signal and the small signal separately. Or in other words, by using the small signal approximation, we can apply the principle of the superposition. That means during the DC analysis, we can consider all the AC sources as zero and we can find the operating point. Similarly, for the small signal analysis, we can consider all the DC sources as zero and we can find the AC response. And the total response will be the summation of the individual response. For example, here we can find the required current to current for the biasing using this DC analysis. And then using the small signal analysis, we can find the change in the current to current. So now let's draw this small signal model of the BJT, which can be used for the small signal analysis. So as we have seen so far, when we apply a small perturbation delta Vb between this base and the emitter terminal, then the change in the current to current IC can be given as Gm times delta Vb. That means the change in the current to current is linearly proportional to the change in the voltage Vb. So in the small signal model, we can represent it as a voltage control current source between this collector and the emitter terminal. Now when there is a change in the current to current, 
then there is a also change in the base current because as we are aware this current to current ic can be given as beta times ib that means whenever there is a change in the current to current then the change in the base current delta ib can be given as delta ic divided by beta and as the base current exists then there has to have some element between this base and the emitter terminal so let us find out that now we know that the change in the current to current ic can be given as gm times delta vb right and we also know that the change in the base current can be given as delta ic divided by beta that is equal to gm times delta vb divided by beta so this expression shows when there is a change in the base emitter voltage then how the base current changes and as you can see the relationship between the two is linear that means we can say that in the small signal model the resistor exists between the base and the emitter terminal and let's call this resistor as the r pi so the value of this resistor r pi can be found by taking the ratio of the voltage delta vb to the delta ib so from this expression we can say that this delta vb divided by delta ib is equal to beta divided by gm and this ratio is nothing but the r pi that means the value of this resistor is equal to beta divided by gm now here to make this representation a bit simpler let us represent the change in the base emitter voltage as the v pi that means now the change in the current to current is equal to gm times v pi and here let's also represent this change in the current to current delta ic as the ic now in general when we refer to the dc signals then they are referred by the upper case letters and similarly when we refer to the ac signals then they are referred by the lower case letters for example over here this current ic represents the dc current to current while this current ic represents the change in the current to current or basically it is the ac current to current so considering this now the current ic can be given as gm times v pi while the base current is equal to ib so the total current to current i is the summation of this base current and the current to current so this is the small signal model of the bjt which can be used for the small signal analysis now so far while drawing this large and the small signal model we have assumed that even if there is a change in the current to emitter voltage then there is a no change in the current to current that means the current to current ic remains the constant but actually the current to current does change with the change in the voltage vc so this effect is known as the early effect so in the next video we will discuss about it in detail and we will also take into account this early effect in the small signal model so i hope in this video you understood the small signal model of the bjt so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos